Welcome back to the fire. WSBN, New York, New York, 44 degrees, 821 AM. Sports fans, let me hear from you while you hear from me. Ongoing story in sports, commissioners talking, leagues talking about expansion. Roger Goodell has mentioned international expansion to Europe. David Stern has mentioned expansion all over the globe. I do not know Mr. Goodell, but Mr. Stern and I, full disclosure, have been double squash partners for years, but that does not change my opinion of the issue. A lot of discussion centered around which cities are deserving, which cities have great sports fans, which cities are great, nay, very great sports towns, and which cities are undeserving and have treated sport like a pile of flaming rubbish. Let me tell you a sports town that gets way too much credit that could stand to lose a team or two or three. We are talking about Boston. Boston, Massachusetts. Thomas Brady, part of a team that is a documented cheating team to win championships. Let me tell you something about the city of Boston. Credited for having passionate sports fans. Let me tell you about what kind of sports fan has time to watch the 47th game of a Red Sox season. The answer is an unemployed fan. The city of Boston is full of them. A bunch of unemployed fans rooting for a team with a bunch of unemployed looking players. Congratulations, Boston. I'd go to your town to soak up the culture, but I can find losers and terrible clam chowder anywhere across this great land. You know how hard it would be to change a bunch of t-shirts and hoodies to read England Patriots from New England Patriots? Not that hard. Be on your toes, Boston, because your team could and should be slipping away from your grasp. Moving on, the next city undeserving of sport greatness, the city of Dallas. Dallas, Texas. Congratulations, Dallas. You have Mavericks and Stars and Rangers and Cowboys. You are represented by nicknames of shapes and antiquated terms for lawmen. That means nothing. Stick to real names like Tigers, Seahawks, and Jazz that represent Americana. Here's the solution, Dallas. Maybe losing a professional team or two will get you outside, Texans and have you lose a pound or two. I've seen what you look like, Texas, and it's not pretty. Do the right thing. And finally, we go to a team that's been spoken of often for the wrong reasons. The city of Minneapolis, a joke of a town. We've discussed it over and over again. We've had multiple mayors on to refute my claims and they end up agreeing with me on the state with 10,000 lakes. And here's the rub. If we are gonna criticize the city of Washington DC and the team, the Washington Redskins for their nickname, why are we not saying anything about Minnesota's NFL team, the Vikings? Incredibly offensive to have Christian Ponder and Josh Freeman representing this proud, proud Northern European heritage. Now I should add this at the end, my lawyers have contacted me and told me to be very wary and very specific about the state of Minnesota. I am tied up in a legal battle with my college roommate who has become a famous musician. I cannot say his name for legal reasons, but he is fond, quite fond of the color purple. Now you might be asking yourself, well, Dan, you're right about everything so far, but say something else and I will. Which town is doing it right? Which town is respecting the history and legacy of sport? San Antonio, Texas, an American cultural landmark. They brought us perhaps the most underrated NBA player of a generation, Malik Rose. Malik Rose, never met him, heard great things. San Antonio, I tip my cap to you. In summation, Boston, Dallas, Minneapolis, you're embarrassing yourselves. Take a long look, Mr. Stern. Do your research, Mr. Goodell. These cities do not deserve the bounty of teams that they currently have. The fans do not appreciate it. The teams deserve better. Move these teams across the globe. Truth on the ones, we'll see you soon.